Hello, Jared. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Milo, and you're watching Mystery Packs on Trading Cards. I've got a bunch of packs that I'm going to open, and you don't know what they are, and you got to watch it. Ah. So today we are going to start with All World Racing. Ah, Sports Inc. That's us. PPG IndyCar, that stands for Party Play Gaming, IndyCar World Series, Party Play Gaming's IndyCar printed in Hong Kong. Don't you hate it when you open a foil pack and it just rips the foil off the packing instead of actually opening the pack of cards that you want to open? 1986-1987 PPG champion Bobby Rahal. He looks like he was a, a in-reserve Ghostbuster. But he's a bud. He's a bud. We got Rick Mears, 81-82 champion. Rick Mears. It's cool. They're very 90s looking dudes. Whoa, the Milwaukee, the 1990 Milwaukee F1 race. Can't forget that. A lot of people finished in positions in that race. Whoa, Mario Andretti finished 21st? That's a tough race. When Mario Andretti's finishing dead last, you know that that race is... 90 Indy 500 mile race. I heard that uh, that Mario Andretti signs, actually. I should get him to sign that one. Uh, who's this? Danny Sullivan, 89 Pocono, 500 winner. Wait a second. Al Unser and Al Unser Jr. were racing against each other in the 7th, and they finished 7th and 9th? If they'd only worked together. Scott Harrington. This name sounds like he was a character in a horror movie. Scott Harrington. Scott Harrington. Hmm. He only had one race result. It was at Elkhart Lake, and he came in 16th. Guess we better make a card for him. Who's this? Bernard Jourdain. Oh, uh, he's French. All world racing, so there's a bound to be a French person. Oh, he's got lots of results. In the, His best result was ninth, and he races all the time. Like, this is his profession. Oof, tough, tough run. Tough run for Jourdain. Phil Kruger, no relation to Freddy. <laughs> and the final card is Tony Bettenhausen. You Bettenhausen, this card ain't worth much. You don't have to bet the housing on it. All right, let's get that taste out of our mouth with some Toxic High School rated PG for pretty gross. Teachers beware. 25 cents for five stickers. Let's see what we got up in er. They're, I think, the same artist as Dinosaurs Attacks, maybe? Senior Prom. That's entertainment. I guess because it was Elvis, a lot of people got sick to their stomachs and vomited during the dance. Toxic High School Senior Prom. You and that mealy-mouthed biscuit-faced drag you call a date are cordially invited to attend the most horrifying... The most horrifying experience since the invention of the freak show, the annual Toxic High Senior Prom. Principal Lou Gross will dribble out some feeble speech about school dances. Refreshments will be served, so bring your stomach pumps and barf bags. Music will be provided by Jesse Bacon, Fat King, Billy Vomit, and all those who try Miss Corpsey's Bean Nachos. Oh, they're going to make you toot. Date April 4th at the Chriswell Memorial Gymnasium, 8 p.m. Proper attire, please. No wetsuits. I was in a lot of clubs in high school. I was the president of the Arbor Club. I ran a film club. I was on the wrestling team. I was on the baseball team. I did a lot of extracurriculars. I was never in the acne club, although I could have probably been the president of that club, too. An unblemished record. <laughs> it's kind of gross. But that's what I pay for. You pay for the gross and you get the gross. The acne club. Oh, and you get all the all the different types of acne club people. Wow. This is a set, man. I wish they made more sets like this. I'd love a toxic high too. English class. 
when the teacher turns his back. Whoa, there's a cannon. Some, and somebody put their butt in somebody else's head. Come on now. I'm going to read all these, not to you now, but in private later. Home ec. Learning to shop on a budget? Home ec grocery list. Three cases of Hyman's Nova Scotia locks. <laughs> and the final card in Toxic High School is the wrestling team. After the match, they never quit. I think they're just hugging each other because it was so traumatic. Wrestling tips. Tip number five. Use psychological warfare. Keep calling your opponent by another name. Hey, Bill, Frank, Ted, Jose, uh, Lamont, Max, Leroy, Dave, Ross. That's a good tip. I don't know, man. I'm just I, I'm just so curious about this. I have no idea what's inside here. It's majestic. Vote for your favorite Comics Future Stars 1993 Premiere Edition. I believe these are going to be photographs of people who made comic books. And I think I'll actually probably know a few of them. Comic Future Stars is a hundred card set featuring the artwork of nearly a hundred exciting new and hidden talents. Work from artists and writers is displayed on full bleed, full color trading cards. Randomly ensued, inserted in these packs are special foil lithograph cards of our hard pop picks and our most valuable player. Also includes a gold foiled stamped subset of co famous comic artists, our star players. Okay, so this is the f these are the first two. All right, not super impressed by the first card in the first pack, but we got comics future stars 1993. Gridlock by Stephen P. B. Jones. Uh, I don't know Stephen Jones. And it looks like some of the cards are... They look like a little too stuck together. You got some white snow on the back here because of the... Pulling them apart. Stealth Microchip Monkeys. I like this. Mike Lemos. Yeah, I don't know this guy. But I'd like to. I kind of like the artwork on this. I think it's fun. I like that card. Wonder. It's an angel locked up. Greg Simonson. His winnings make him a freak in a cruel society. His immeasurable innocence made him a victim. And that's the artist, not the character. Whoa! R. Miller. Rob Miller. Robert Miller. Russell Miller. Hurlant. I'm not familiar with this character either. Kind of gross looking. I don't like the red stuff because that looks like muscle. It's like just exposed muscle, like organic muscle. Is that what that's supposed to be? I don't like it. Uh, whoa, hey, this is definitely a Marvel character. They're going to be in the next big movie. Guardians of the Galaxy 3 introduces this character in the MCU. Lady Zero by Andrew Pepoy. Got another card here. It's this lady wearing a bubble on her head, messing around with these green aliens. Rebecca Harlock by Craig Gilmore. I don't think that's his real photograph. Freelancer! This looks like uh, the cover of somebody's notebook in grade three. Niall Connor always, had always been a man in conflict, warring with himself and as a member of the Irish Republican Army. Ooh, Dark Hawk. The Talon. This artist actually looks familiar, but probably not. Nope. Philip Hester. Big Guns. Yeah, I mean, these are all potential huge blockbuster IPs for movie studios now. Ooh, I think about all the money you could make off all these IPs, especially Freelancer. Ooh, tap into that Irish Republican Army audience. Two packs left. I'm going to start with KO. These are round one boxing cards from 1991-92. Got some boxing cards here. Let's see what we got. Some of these are, are quite good. Uh, it's a lot of cards per pack. Uh, 14. I mean, that's pretty standard for for 1991-92, but it feels like a lot. Yuri Volin, 
Joe Lewis. Oh, smokes. All-time great. We've got a Joe Lewis. That's a good one to get, I guess. The Brown Bomber is regarded by many as one of the greatest heavyweight champions of all time. An attacking fighter. Won the title by knocking out James Braddock and successfully defended the title 25 times over a 12-year period. Elected Boxing Hall of Fame in 1954, Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis. Duzito Espinoza. This is a cool shot. Uh, it's a little blurry, but you know what? It's a nice action pose. I like this shot, too. They could have just used that. From Manila, Philippines. There's, you know, a lot of boxers, especially modern times from the Philippines. Manny Pacquiao, right? He's one of them. He's from the Philippines as well. Jim Corbett, all-time great. I like when boxers used to box like this. Put them on, put them on, put up your dokes, put up your dokes. This guy, man, look at him. He could have been an actor. Gentleman Jim won the world heavyweight title by knocking out Bare Knuckle Champion John A. Sullivan in the 21st round in 1892 lost the title to Bob Fitzsimmons. You just know things were pretty brutal back then. 21 rounds. Whoa. Okay. No such thing as a concussion then. Greg Richardson. Wow. It's a cool fight. I like these cards. Veteran Bantamweight who won the WBC this one's interesting. We have Wallace Matthews, a writer. I never saw this guy box. Newsday boxing columnist who is the president of the Boxing Writers Association of America, also a color commentator for ESPN, in-depth reporting for NBC at the 1988 Olympics, led to several on-air interviews. Cool. That's nice. That's like a fun insert for a 90s product, you know? Loretto Garza. These cards are awesome. These are really cool cards. This is exactly what you would want if you were super into boxing and collected cards. You would open this and you would be like, yeah, we got some all-time greats, some personalities, some boxers of all different weight classes. The card design is perfect, uh, especially for the 90s. Michael Carbajal. A champion for junior flyweight and junior flyweight the first fighter from the Olympic class of 1988 to win a world title and who else do we got here Emmett Linton a welterweight Carmen Basilo all-time great that's a nice shot I like how the all-time greats are in the black and white photography Wow, that doesn't even look like the same guy. He won a decision over Sugar Ray Robinson to become the middleweight champion of the world. This is one everybody probably knows. Lennox Lewis, heavyweight. Lennox Lewis. Look at all the people he fought. We got Ingalls Pedrosa, welterweight. From, home, from Long Beach, California, 132 loss, 3 draw, 0, 31 KOs. Just knocking people's lights out, this guy. Dwight Muhammad Kwai, cruiserweight. This looks like another tough guy I wouldn't want to have to fight. I wouldn't do well in boxing. I don't think I could beat up any of these guys. I think all these guys would beat me up. I think even... Where's that guy, that writer? All right, and even this guy here, Chuck Minker. I don't know, we'd have a go, but I mean, he's probably watched more boxing than me. That unibrow knocked me out. Executive director of the Nevada Athletic Commission since the 1980s. He might be dead. This guy might be dead. Chuck Minker. Well, I loved those cards. Those were great. This is a long one. This is, I just really liked opening these cards and talking about them. Big League Baseball. We're going to end with Big League Baseball. The final pack of Big League Baseball. we got a Tyler Glass now. Tarek Skubal. Taylor Ward. I love this set because they give you so much bang for your buck. 
We have an Ahmed Rosario. Emmanuel Class. And Guardians pitcher. Zach Gallon pitcher. He looks... Uh, my partner, Catherine, mentioned this and I agree. Doesn't this guy look like... Uh, if you ever watch Norm Macdonald's sports show, his cousin, this guy, or his nephew who would cover the weird events. And then he also had his own Netflix show and he was on SNL. I don't know that guy's name, but there's going to be a picture of him on the screen right now. Taylor Ward, which we've already seen. And then, wow, wow. So I have not yet opened a Blue Jay that was like a special card like this. So I'm glad we ended up getting one. It's not a, a drip, but I will take a Vladdy Guerrero Jr. You know, this is a really cool one. I like it a lot. And then we got a George Springer as well. We got two Blue Jays as our special cards. What a way to end the video. Oh my. Oh my. What are the odds of that happening? Uh, thank you all so much for watching. And take care. I'm, keep, I'm keeping these two. But if you're interested in any of the other cards, they're up for trade. Okay, bye.